So Shabbos, the time for uh, Shabbos, the fourth of Adar, we're obviously uh, taking the video uh, on uh, Thursday, so no one should, God forbid, think that we're taking it on Shabbos. Uh, being in a perpetual inner battle and winning is possibly one's life mission, not necessarily transformation. So it doesn't mean that we should uh, strive to end the battle. We should strive to win the battle. So another battle will come. We should strive to win the next one. So it's, transformation means that there's no more battles. Now we'll see why is it important to always win the, to win the battle, not necessarily to transform ourselves. With every repulsion of this uh, thought from his mind, the sitracha is uh, surpassed, or is suppressed, rather, it's suppressed here below in this world being minimized, being lowered. Now, since the arousal from below, in our case, the initiative of the Benoni is suppressing the, sit the Sitra Acha, produces a corresponding arousal above. So if you are suppressing the Sitra Acha below, as there is awakening from above, uh, from above, in the same vein, the sitracha above, in the supernal world, the root of the sitracha of this world, which soars like an eagle, is also supp uh, suppressed. So you're accomplishing two things. You're dealing with your little evil in here, in this world, but that takes care of the sitracha above, which is the source of the evil down here. Lekayma Shinema, realizing the verse, fulfilling the verse. Im Tagbiya Kanesha, it's a verse in Ovadia. Im Tagbiya Kanesha, though you saw aloft like, in, like the eagle, Misham I will I will yet bring you down from there, says God. Indeed, the Zoyar in Parshas page 128, extols the divine satisfaction that occurs when the Sitra is subdued here below. The Istalik says you have to realize what is the, the excitement and the change that happens upstairs due to uh, accomplishing this concept and winning the battle. Thereby, God's glory rises above all when, when you uh, suppress the, the, the other side, uh, suppress impurity, suppress evil inclination, more than by any other praise. So a guy would praise God all day long and another guy had a chance to sin and he didn't do it. He had a, a thought of a, an impure thought and he rejected it. He brought more joy than all the praises. Thereby, God's glory rises above all more than by any other praise. And this ascent is greater than all. This ascent is greater than all else. It is the evil thoughts which enter the mind of the Benoni that enable him to fulfill God's command in averting his attention from them, thereby subduing the Sitra Acha. So a guy has evil thoughts, they enter his mind, they enter the mind of a Benoni also. And now they're giving you the opportunity to fulfill God's will. Because of that evil thought, you have a chance now to rise above. And therefore, therefore, one should not feel depressed 
or very troubled at heart. He ought to be somewhat troubled by the occurrence of these thoughts, by the, occur the occurrence of these thoughts, otherwise he may become indifferent to them and will cease to wage war against them. But he ought not to be solely troubled by them. Meaning you need to be troubled, otherwise you're not going to fight. If you're not troubled by the negative, by the negative thoughts, you become comfortable with it, then why should you, why should you fight it? So you have to have a certain degree of, of discomfort, saying I'm, I'm not comfortable with this, I'm going to battle this thought. But at the same time, you cannot be depressed by it because that very thought is an opportunity for you to grow. And as we said, it's an opportunity that can, uh, as the Zohar, as the Zohar describes it, the God's glory rises above all at the moment that you win the battle. Even if he be, if that individual is engaged all his days in this conflict, even if the conflict continues on and on, with the thoughts which always, which will always enter his mind, he should still be a, a, in discomfort because of these thoughts, but not depressed. Though he may never rise to the level which precludes their occurrence, yet he should not be depressed. But perhaps this is what he was created for, and this is the service demanded of him, to subdue the Sitra constantly. How do you know? Maybe that's what you were created for to bring that type of a joy to God. Concerning this, Eov said, Eov said to God, Job said to God, you have created wicked men. What does it mean you created wicked men? As though it, it were preordained that one man be wicked and another uh, righteous. In the first chapter, the author pointed out that that this is contradicted by the statement in the Gemara that before a child is born, God decrees whether he shall be wise or foolish, strong or weak, and so on, but does not determine whether he will be righteous or wicked. This is left to one's own choice. You can choose what you want to be. The meaning of Eov's statement becomes clear, however, in light of the above discussion. True, God does not ordain whether men will act wickedly, but He does create wicked men, which means in the sense that their minds work like the mind of a wicked, of the Russia, with evil thoughts constantly occurring to them. God created that mind. God created them in this way so that they will engage in battle with these thoughts and thereby subjugate the Sitra as the Alter Rebbe now goes on to say. And we see it clearly that some people have certain struggles that other people don't have. One guy battles with uh, drinking, one guy battles with food, one guy battles with anger, one guy battles with uh, laziness. Each one battles as his own battle. One guy battles with everything. But when it says you created a Rishoyim, when Eov says you, God created wicked, doesn't mean that they are wicked. He created their minds to be like the wicked. That they would constantly have to deal with this conflict. But it's, it's also for their own benefit. They have more opportunities, right? The implication of Eov's statement is not that they were created to actually be wicked, God forbid sinful in thought, speech, and action. But that there should occur to them in their thoughts and musings alone, that which occurs to the wicked. The evil thoughts should enter their mind as they do in the mind of the wicked. So the same way, a mind of the wicked and the mind of, of the Benoni. They both have evil thoughts. 
The difference is that the Benoni is waging war against it. And they shall certainly wage war to avert, to avert their minds from them in order to subjugate the Sitra Yet they will never be able to annihilate the Sitra in their souls completely. For this is accomplished by Tzadikim. A tzaddik subjugate his animal soul to such degree that it is unable to arouse temptation in his heart. His mind is therefore untroubled by, by evil thoughts. Those, however, of whom Job, uh, of whom uh, Job, Eob, said that they were created wicked, cannot rise to this level. That, they, that their animalistic soul does not produce, does not arouse any temptation in their heart. It is always possible for evil thoughts to enter their mind. The task is not to give them free reign. That's it. That's the Tanya for Shabbos, the fourth day of Adar.